Greetings from Sydney. Do we look like excited kids at Christmas? We are. I want to open the presents. I'm so excited. Big things coming for us. Our boat is hopefully coming down the coast in a couple days. Yeah, we're gonna have major announcements on that front uh, probably in the next video or two. We just wanna make sure things are a little bit more cemented before we go out there and say, yep, this is our new boat. This is a performance catamaran. And it's a topic that's been brought up by not just us, but other sailing channels. It seems that performance boats are a little bit more in vogue right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, brokers even say that everybody wants a performance boat now. I'm not so sure that a performance boat is right for everybody. In fact, I think that a performance boat would have been a big mistake for us as a first catamaran. And well, we had already owned three boats previous. It is not just about cutting the handles off your toothbrushes to conserve weight. There's a lot of other considerations. A lot of people want to go cruising and just relax. Well, a performance boat is not your set it and forget it experience. Yeah, in fact, in a lot of situations, a performance boat is going to be a lot less relaxing than something that's a little heavier and steadier. If you're seriously considering a performance catamaran, you should really watch this video and think about the compromises. We've been taking our own advice, which is to get out there and sail on as many boats as possible. We've been learning from the boats, of course, what we do like, what we don't like, but invaluable has been speaking to sailing experts, the people who actually know, including Chris White, Annie Gardner, Eric Witte, and I just let it go. None of this helping it out stuff. Shane from Young Barnacles. Where's your out? Up or down? You know, that's the first piece of information. These folks have been incredibly generous with their time and we've learned a tremendous amount. Today we're going to take you on a little tour. We thought we'd go sailing. A tour and an interview with new owners of a Looping 50. This is about one of the fastest, slickest rides that we've been on. It's the green machine. I like this color. I had a bike this color once. It reminds me of the shallows of the Exumas. That's beautiful. This video is brought to you by AG1, by Athletic Greens. Thank you guys for sponsoring this video. I think the hardest part of living on the road is eating healthy. It really is. I mean, you're moving around a lot. You're trying to find the stuff that's good for you, but it can be really hard. Yeah, and AG1 makes it so easy. They have these travel packs, 75 vitamins, minerals, prebiotics, probiotics. So you really know you're getting a comprehensive whole food support. And I hear numbers like that and I'm just like, all right, that's well and good. But the truth is that I actually feel a difference when I drink this. I'm not just saying that. Yeah, no, I feel more focus, more clarity. You know, as we're aging, you know, we're in our mid sixties now. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> no, we will be 50 next year. And so to know that this is supporting healthy aging with skin, hair, brain, all those things, fighting free radicals, it really is important. We get sponsorship offers basically on a daily basis. And as you've seen from the videos, we turn basically everything down. So we really do try and only promote things that we actually like. And I wouldn't say I'm a tough customer when it comes to food, but when it comes to green juice, I am. And this stuff, in my opinion, tastes pretty good. So if you want to try it for yourself, you'll get free five travel packs and a year supply of vitamin D3 and K2 with your first purchase. Just click on the link below in the description. Nice to finally meet you guys. You too. We, we, tell us about the boat. What are we on? We're on looping, is it 50 or 55? No, looping 50, um, designed by Patrick Lucher. She was built in Sete in Southern France. She's got super fine entry bows. She's very narrow hulled. So there's not a lot of friction under the water. This is a rocket ship, basically. She is an intimidating boat. Um, I think we went into it with an awareness that it could go wrong um, if we didn't know what we were doing. Yeah. You know, we wanted to get this boat and have the opportunity to do this kind of sailing while we're physically able. There's several of the YouTube channels that are moving to quote unquote 
performance boats. So there's kind of, uh, amongst the people shopping, they're starting to say, well, I want a performance boat as opposed to a heavier production boat. Can you guys, now that you've got a, a bit of experience with a very, very light boat, is there anything you could tell them about what they might be in for? Yeah. <laughs> it's a reality that she could tip over because she's so light. So And powerful. You said 7.5 tons. All right, 7.5 tons, 16,500 pounds displacement. I think a little perspective is needed here. Our last boat, a Leopard 46, had a fantastic sail area to displacement ratio of 30.4. She sailed great, but she was an absolute tank compared to a looping 50. Her light ship displacement was 24,000 pounds, and her loaded weight varied anywhere from 28,500 to 30,000 pounds when we had full water and fuel. So in spite of the fact that both boats have similar sail area to displacement ratios, Clarity weighed just a little bit less than twice as much as the looping, but was four feet shorter. A much more forgiving design. The feeling of the power she has, so if you are out, we've had the full main up, and you get a little gust, that just adds five or six knots to it and you're unprepared for it, 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 it will push you back in the seat. Like if you're in the helm seat, it literally pushes you back in the seat because she picks up and she goes. Yeah. Whereas, you know, a, a big old heavy boat, you get a five knot gust to wind and you might go, oh, it's got a bit windier. <laughs> you feel it with yeah, this. It gets up and goes mm -hmm. and it happens instantaneously. The margin for it going wrong decreases way, way, you're way closer to that point of it's gone a little bit wrong if you're not conservative with it, if you're not cautious. And sure, if you're a seasoned sailor who knows and has been kicking around and has experienced it, but I think even somebody maybe experienced on a heavier cat, you could easily overstep the bounds on a boat like this. In fact, we've had some advice that says if you have someone come on board who is really experienced, don't let them sort of bully you into seeing what she can do because they will be potentially telling you to do that with experience on different boats and saying, well, this will be amazing. But firstly, it's not their boat. And secondly, you don't know until you've experienced it. As the skipper, it's always in the back of my mind that I'm going to bring that reef in just a little bit earlier and you're watching out further than you would normally for light white crests over there. Just because you yeah. look at it and go, I don't want to get caught unawares. It, yeah. it, it is a super heightened awareness of this could go this could go up another level really really quickly you know if you had a full main up and you suddenly got it went from 20 to 26 knots you would be struggling with the setup that this has at the moment in the sails to get that reef into the sail because then you get into the apparent wind of you trying to turn up wind to lose some power or turn down wind she's actually increasing the apparent wind and you're then way to go get yourself in even more trouble trying to get yourself out of trouble yeah. um, so it, we're super aware of that I think the thing for us about her being faster is having been on a boat that you were lucky if we got above six knots six and a half knots was kind of whoa we're, we're motoring here going well um, having a boat that can go a little bit faster makes a big difference to how quickly you can get where you're going if you're on a long passage um, so I think that's helpful but you have to probably go into it with your eyes open about what you're buying because I think it is a completely different experience to have something this light that can go this fast. It's exciting and exhilarating, but it, the flip side of that is it could the be margin, more dangerous. Yeah, the, the margin for it going wrong. So don't feel the need to rush into pushing the envelope of what she's capable of. We know she's capable of it, but we're happy to learn the process that's true because you can sail this boat like it's a lagoon or a, a non-performance cat you just pull it in tighter and don't let it go and it will sail beautifully still at a slower pace and far more controlled but the legs are there to let it go if you want it so when she gets up and goes she just gets up and goes 
I mean, she's it's beautiful. So when we had um, when we had the Jenica up and we were so sort of 14 knots of wind, we were going 12 knots, and it was like whoosh, whoosh. Just the sound, the phosphorescence. Just beautiful. It's what you sail the dream for. It's, it's that's the sailing that you want. Um, and then we've had you know we've had a couple of upwind stretches where having seen some of the production boat sailing and the hobby horse she's fine enough that she doesn't really hobby horse she's got fantastic bridge deck clearance so yes you get the odd slap there i don't think there's a catamaran out there that doesn't slap but you get very very little of it to go back to to go back to the sailing conservatively thing uh, we came out here to sail today hmm. Well, we were hoping to take a sailing. But all of us are saying, no, that's okay. <laughs> it was supposed to be 10 knots, and then the, now it's like gusting to 37. So yeah. we're like, no, that's all right. Okay, we didn't go today because it's gusting 37. But if we knew all we were going to get was 8 to 10, you can go out and know you can actually still have a really great day, and you're not trying to get 15 to 20 tons worth of boat moving. Well, she'll sail fine in 8 to 10, 12 knots. She'll still pop the Jennifer up and she'll just drift along at a good pace. So you mentioned the physicality of this boat. So you definitely are, you, you touched on the fact that you're definitely watching it a lot closer. You're much more actively engaged. Yes. And then it's it's a more physical boat. Like you gotta be ready to jump and get around. And, and I mean, I'm lucky I'm big and I'm quite physically strong. So that wingspan again. <laughs> if I needed to get a reef in the sail, you would probably have to be more physical than something that's maybe newer and it's got like single line reefing in it. She's got um, a self-tacking jib, so you don't have to go and do anything with that. It's actually super easy to work with. It's a big fan of that. Still need to learn a little bit more about it, but rather than letting the sheet go and pulling in miles of sheet, you just literally wind it over on the traveler and wind it back again on the traveler and it's great. You wouldn't have to leave the cockpit at all. Everything else would be done, but she is still quite a physical boat. I need to put the Jenica up. Yeah, I need, yeah, to put the Jenica up and I suppose tackle jive with the Jenica. You're really quite tall. <laughs> and I can still. Yeah, I'm not tall. <laughs> Jean, what was the big selling point for you on this boat? Oh, my Nick, I, I don't know what it is that you're talking about. Would it be this enormous refrigerator? <laughs> oh, wow. That so is, jealous. that's house size. It is house size and there's no leaning in. Yeah, I really like the uh, finished interior. That's something that we hoped we could find with our next boat. You know, you don't have the fabric liners. No, this is, I think it was spray painted, which is why it looks so nice. So the interior, and when you look at all the workmanship inside, everything's curved. So like if you go and look down in the bathrooms, everything's built in. All the cupboards are built in and they're all beautifully curved. So no water sits anywhere, no damp sits anywhere. It's super easy to clean and wipe. There's no like 90 degree corners that you can get stuff in, get stuff stuck in. Um, and the whole boat's like that. There's no bilge smell because there's no bilges. Um, the only bilges are in the engine rooms. The rest of it's been fiberglassed in um, completely and sealed. So there's no air gets in or out, nothing smells. It gives you a lot of reserve buoyancy. Um, everything's accessible. So she's got an internal venting system that actually comes through the anchor locker and goes to all the cabins, which is ducted, I think it's three inch tube. So whenever she's pointing into the wind, which of course when you're at anchor she is, there's actually forced air ventilation coming through into all the cabins and the heads. Like keeping the mold away and keeping it freshly vented is a super, super idea. And the fact that it's all built in and we don't have to have like windows open, so it can be lashing with rain outside and we've had it lashing rain outside and it's still vented in here. Yeah, so in those air vents, yeah. if you want to make sure you're not having bugs or anything, then this can just slot into the space to give you airflow, but bug oh, avoidance. Nice. Any hesitation about going such high performance? I mean, this is like one of the slickest boats that we've been on. If I'm honest, yeah. did we know we were buying one of the slickest boats that you've ever been on? Not no. entirely. Yeah. So we did want something that would sail, but we also wanted other features and okay i love the fridge that's not the only reason but we wanted other features we wanted to be able to live on it and i think she just ended up being the perfect combination of saleable and livable in a configuration we wanted she just happens to be really fast, really fast. <laughs> but that might have been a fringe benefit of the broader decision we made rather than the pure reason that we went for this gotcha. yeah it wasn't the driver it was definitely a 
benefit yeah. as opposed to the driver for it. Did you have any moments when you were actually at Sailinger where you were like, oh, what have we gotten ourselves here? Nothing like that? No, I don't think so. I mean, I think it was, as we said, super helpful to have the previous owner give us five days of his time, and he was amazing. And because we had all of his five years of experience rolled into five days of storytelling and re fit, like, actually tangibly showing us how to do things, it made us really aware of what we'd bought. And then we went into the next three weeks sailing on our own in difficult conditions, actually, which, again, in hindsight, whilst it wasn't a lot of fun at some times, was probably a really good learning. An amazing learning. An yeah. amazing learning experience for both of us, I think. Yeah. Because ultimately, once you're out doing it, you're doing it. There's no, <laughs> oh, can we just return this to the dealer, please? You're there. Yeah. You actually, and that's why, like I said earlier, you can tame her right down and make her quite calm. So long as you manage it first up. Otherwise, she can run away with you. I think quite easily. I think she could very easily run away. But if you are aware of that, and that's what we've been super aware of. You can just yeah. calm her down, and well, she's a yeah. lovely sailing boat. So we're here in Sydney. We definitely get around. We're getting used to this airport shuffle. <laughs> and I gotta say, here in Australia, getting through the, the uh, security and all that, it's a lot easier than back in the States. They know what they're doing here. We don't even have to take our shoes off. Or the laptops out of the bag. <laughs> it's great news. Uh, we are bouncing around give you a little bit more of a real-time update here. The weather, anybody in Australia has been saying the weather has been crazy this year. It's a La Nina year. It's chilly. It should be very, very warm here, but that's also affected our plans with the boat. We were hoping that we would be aboard our new boat by now and be able to tell you what it is, announce what it is. But the boat has been stuck with headwinds in uh, Queensland. Yes, weather delays, and that's something you got to listen to. Mother Nature. Mother Nature, she's going to tell you when to go and when to stay. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping that we are aboard in the first week of January, and that's when we'll spill the beans, tell everybody what we got. Why are we being so secretive about this at this point? Well, now I'm just feeling like it's a little bit superstitious. <laughs> I mean, we wore our uh, hearts on our sleeves for a couple of the boats. Yeah, and that I think kind of bit us in the backside a bit. When the boats fell through, we felt a little silly, and I think maybe the sellers felt a little silly too. So this time around, we're gonna wait until it's a bit more of a sure thing. So sorry for the uh, teasing you about what boat we're gonna get, but we're extremely excited about it. I don't think we could have found a better fit. This boat needs the O'Kelly Touch. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be a lot of upgrades, a lot of uh, changes that we make to the boat to make it a little easier for us to sail mm -hmm. and do some miles. Well, and we certainly feel like the search is over because we are not even looking or thinking about a different boat. Not for us, at least. Yeah. The consulting clients still out there shopping and folks, we are looking on your behalf. Yes. Thanks as always to the patrons. Yes, welcome to all the new patrons who now know what kind of boat we're getting. Yeah, there's <laughs> a bit more behind the scenes detail that we're sharing with the patrons and a little bit more of a private forum, doing a lot of Q&A and stuff like that. I think this is gonna be a fantastic adventure for us mm -hmm. because as you go through the, the process of upgrading a boat, you learn about the newest tech and I think we're gonna have an opportunity to share mm -hmm. a lot of new equipment with you. That's gonna be fun. Thank you so much for spending your valuable time with us. Happy New Year. Take care, everybody. One more special thanks. Tim, thank you so much for setting us up with this incredible space and showing us around Sydney. You smell oh, yes. some of this cooking. <laughs> Tim is earning I'll be, himself I'll a be spot. swimming alongside. Designated I'll be chef. the designated chef.